Hi, I'm Van Homan. Welcome to Source BMX. Today I'm here in San Diego with street legend Nathan Williams, and we're going to take a look at his kink Williams build kitted out with cinema parts. So Nathan, you've got your own signature frame with kink. It's called the Williams frame, obviously your last name. Why don't you tell us a little bit about this frame and what's most important to you when designing a frame? I think the, the main thing for me is uh, pretty much like the head tube angle and then the length of the, the rear end. Cause like the front end, you know, obviously if it's too steep, it makes it really like twitchy. And then the back end, if it's too short, then, you know, it gets really loopy. So that's kind of like the main things. But other than that, I'm pretty, pretty whatever about it, you know. Okay, so just trying to find that perfect balance between stable and responsive. Exactly, exactly, yep. Oh, it's called the help frame. I, it's called the help frame? Uh, it's, it's called the Williams frame, but just the graphics on this, uh, on the, on this model is called, it's the help is, is what we're. So what did you need help with, figuring out the geometry or designing a <laughs> signature frame? Uh, I think I needed help with my brain, yeah, for a little bit, yeah. I think that's kind of what it was all about. But then I started this little like hat thing called help. Okay. Um, so it kind of just tied into that as well, so. So Nathan, you're running kind of a longer setup. You've got the 21.25 top tube and you've got your wheel as far back in the dropout as possible. So break that down for us. You know, why do you choose kind of the longer setup? Uh, so I've, I've always run a 21 um, and I have, was running a 21 with you know, my back end's a 12.75, um, and it just was feeling too short. I felt like there were certain times, like doing like a manual to rail, I would kind of get like a loop, loopy kind of feeling, um, and then like manual 180s, like normally when you go to preload, I would like, it. normally it would be fine, but then with that short back end and the 21 top tube, I was starting to like get looped out, and so I was like, well, try a longer top tube, so I got 21.25 on the top tube, and then the back end, because it's a 12.75, I actually like to ride it more like 13, um, so that's why it's it's hanging off the back there. So pretty much every every frame that I've had, I just measure the chain. If okay. I put a new chain on, you know, you measure the chain just mm -hmm. that way. It's all always the, the same length there. I mean, I get a lot of comments on it, obviously, because it looks. If you look at it over top, you know, you see the axle hanging mm -hmm. out, but it's been. But it works and you've got options. So I found this pretty interesting about your bike, Nathan. You've got a kink prototype fork on here. It's got an adjustable offset, so you can go anywhere from 20 to 25 millimeters. Um, what offset do you prefer and do you ever adjust the offset for different terrain? So I prefer the 25 millimeter offset. Um, it just like I was saying earlier, it's not as like twitchy with the turning. Um, I've tried the 20 millimeter and for me, it um, it just doesn't, it's not practical. You know, I don't do that many nose manuals or anything like that. And so it just feels more stable uh, for me, like the 25. But it is nice to have that option. You know, if you, know, if you want, you can flip them back and forth, so. You can't see, um, like even when the fork is just sitting on the shelf, you can't see it just looks like a normal dropout, you know? You can't see like the little adjustable thing in there. Um, okay. So it just, it looks nice too. So, so it's adjustable, but it's got a really clean look. Exactly. All right, Nathan, you got your own signature kink bars, four piece bars, what size are they? You haven't always run four piece bars, have you? So why do you choose four piece? What do you like about them? I switched to four piece a couple years ago, maybe. Um, and it's just a look, you know? I mean, it's the exact same geometry as my other, my other bar, the two piece bar. Um, it just is a different look. It kind of looks a little bit more retro, mm. I guess, you know, to me. Uh, I think the rise is 925 on them, and I think they come 29, uh, but I cut them down to probably 27. Um, and I, I made them that way just to have some option, you know, because it's like if you make them 27, maybe someone wants a 29, you can't really do that, you know, so um, so I made them a little bit longer and I just cut them down because it's not a big deal. Yeah, perfect. Again, you're, you're just providing more options. If you want them longer, you run them as a stock. If you want them shorter, you cut them down. Yep. All right, Nathan, you've got the Cinema Tinez stem, Corey Martinez signature. Corey's an old friend of yours. What's up with this stem? What do you like about it? Well, um, it's it's pretty good. I, I like that it's uh, oh, oh. Oh. Let, me, let, me let me talk about this. This, this is my product right here. <laughs> so this stem right here is a good in-between top and bottom front load. It does everything, 48 millimeter reach. It's good for bar spins, good for backwards grinds, luckies. Yeah, all, all the tricks you want to do, this stem will make you do it. This is the best stem. So how do you feel about Nathan that's Williams running your stem? So that's why he rides it, because he can do all that. So he can be, if he rides a stem, he can be as talented as Corey Martinez. One day. One day. 
All right, Nathan, you've got the kink brace cranks on here, 165 millimeters. 165 used to be considered a little bit short, now it's becoming more of the standard. What do you like about these cranks and why do you run that size? So I started running these cranks just, I feel like they have a really good look to them. They have a good design to them. Um, and then the 165 thing, uh, I had been hearing some stuff from other guys just on how, like if, you're, if your feet are a little bit closer together, um, you know, it could maybe give you a little bit more hop or just, you know, it could uh, kind of fix like your hips and stuff so your mm. hips aren't always like so far this way. Um, so I just started trying it and I liked it and it just kind of stuck. Mm. Yeah. Nathan, you've got a collab seat on here. Kink and Etnies teamed up. Kind of rare for a shoe company and a bike company to team up on a seat. I think you had a lot of input on this. What's the deal with the seat? Yeah, I just wanted something that looks simple and classic. Um, a buddy of mine, Ty Morrow, actually had done a seat kind of similar to this with the corduroy uh, material and I thought it just looked really good. Um, so it comes in black as well as the brown. Just wanted to do two simple colors and keep it keep it classic. So, cool. Yeah, I think it does have like a classic and like you said, kind of a retro look with the bars. I feel like the bars in the seat really go well together. Yeah, kind of. Yeah, it's like a maybe late late 90s vibe sort of. Yeah. yeah. So you've got the Garrett Reynolds Cinema Signature Wheels. A lot of times you're trying to piece together your wheels, your spokes, your hubs. These things come straight out of the box, ready to go, ready for action. Straight out of the box. You're getting exactly what the pros are riding. Exactly. Yep. That's how they, these get sent to me is all laced up, everything. It's ready to go. And you've got the Cinema Free, it's a free coaster? Yep. It's a free coaster. It's the FX2. Uh, so it's the revised version of the FX uh, free coaster. I've had no no qualms about it. It's, it's, it's perfect. You've got the Dakota Roach Cinema Signature Pegs. What's important for you in a peg when you're doing some of those massive or technical grinds that you do? Main thing for me is just having a steel insert. Um, so insert meaning like the, the part on the inside of the peg that the, the plastic goes over is steel instead of aluminum. Uh, a lot of companies make the aluminum pegs which is, is cool but um, they can break. Okay. And so with the steel peg it's just nice to know that it's never, it's like riding a metal peg, you know, it's not going to just snap off on you. Okay. Um, so for me that's, that's the main thing. Yeah, so with these pegs you get the strength of a steel peg with the slipperiness of a plastic peg. Exactly. <laughs> and if you don't want plastic pegs, you can just take the sleeve off and you can ride it as a metal oh, peg. Oh, really? Yeah. Absolutely. I mean, it's it's a smaller diameter probably than, than like a normal uh, metal peg, but you can still, still, still work. So. Nathan, a seasoned professional, I asked you what kind of brakes you had on this thing, and you used this as a perfect opportunity to plug the Etnies Murana shoe right here. Well, actually, man, a uh, great part about these shoes is, I don't know if you can see the bottom, uh, they're done by Michelin, has Michelin rubber, um, and they last an insane, insanely long time. Um, so this is my favorite brake to ride in. This is my brakes. Um, yeah, they're great. Nathan, thanks for talking with SourceBMX.com today and telling the people all about your bike. Is there anything else you feel like the people need to know about this build? Uh, just thanks to all my sponsors for keeping me going and uh, check out my bike on Source BMX Bike Builder. Check out Nathan's bike on the Bike Builder on SourceBMX.com. You can see the exact specs, pricing, and availability for everything Nathan Williams is riding. SourceBMX.com.